Now a class of structures that are related to 2D crystals are helical tubes and consider them in a flat perspective, we would see that these helical tubes are closely related to two-dimensional crystals in that they have a series of unit cells that are packed close together in an ordered array in two dimensions. Now it turns out if you consider an array like this, depending on how you cut the edges at what angle and how you roll it up, the same two-dimensional lattice can actually wrap up into different families of heli helical tubes with different pitches. You can make the cut and it'll seal together with different pitches between them. And so that's being illustrated here that a, a single lattice can give rise to uh, helical families of minus 17.5, minus 18.6, minus 16.6, etc. Different families can arise from the same 2D crystal. Nevertheless, despite this fact that they can form different helical families, when a protein self-assembles into a helical tube, it's a great advantage for cryo-EM because then in a single projection image, one obtains a range of views all the way around the particle because you have different unit cells in different orientations as it goes around the tube. So you obtain all the views in a single projection image. If the crystal wraps up in a tube, it can also stabilize the order in the lattice. And so in this figure, taken from a paper in 2000, the authors had purified the capsid protein from the HIV virus and found that it would self-assemble in vitro into these long tubes. So here is a helical tube of HIV capsid protein. Here's another one of the helical tubes another helical tube. In addition, other structures formed, uh, including the canonical cone-shaped core of an HIV virion. Nevertheless, when the authors took straight segments of the helical tubes and calculated the Fourier transform of those images, the diffraction pattern looks like this. Instead of being a number of discrete spots, the Fourier transform of a tube has a series of so-called layer lines of varying amplitude and phase. And while the details of how to go from these kinds of diffraction patterns with layer lines to a three-dimensional reconstruction are beyond the scope of this presentation, nevertheless, uh, the methods have been worked out in detail and one can go from diffraction patterns like this to three-dimensional reconstructions of these helical tubes to very high resolution. And imaging and analyzing the helical tubes can be thought of as a variant of electron crystallography.